Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Today we have a very very big news coming in right from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has ruled that the appointment of the Chief Election Commissioner and the other election commissioners in the Election Commission of India from now onwards will be done by the President on the advice of a panel of people that shall comprise of the Prime Minister, the Leader of Opposition of the Lok Sabha and also the Chief Justice of India. Do remember, so far the government did not take any advice from anyone else while the appointment of the Chief Election Commissioner used to take place. That is why this is such a very, very, very important news in terms of Indian polity and in terms of how real politics in India actually changes. As you know, the Election Commission of India is responsible for conducting elections in India for the President, the Vice President, the Parliament as well as the state legislatures. That is why the responsibility of ensuring that entire democracy works properly, that the elections take place in a fair manner is on the Election Commission of India. And that is why this post is so, so, so important. Now, as you know, Election Commission of India is a constitutional body. And as per the constitution, it shall comprise of a chief election commissioner and as many election commissioners as the president wants from time to time. So right now, it is a three member body. This Three member body till now was appointed by the President of India on the advice of the Council of Ministers. The Supreme Court has now a five judge constitutional bench has unanimously ruled. Unanimously means all the five judges have voted in favor that from now onwards, while the President shall continue appointing the Chief Election Commissioner and the other election commissioners. However, from now onwards, the appointment shall not be just on the advice of the Council of Ministers. Rather, it shall be on the advice of a committee consisting of the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, the Lok Sabha and the Chief Justice of India. Now, the interesting part is, even before this, multiple committees and commissions have suggested that the process of appointing of the Chief Election Commissioner should change. Some of these committees also included the second ARC. So even the second ARC had suggested that we need to change the process of appointment of the Chief Election Commissioner and finally this has been done. The interesting part is that a lot of other bodies in India are appointed in a similar manner. For example, look at the Director of the CBI. The CBI Director is appointed again by the President on the appointment of a similar three-member committee. The interesting part is even this appointment process of CBI Director was suggested by the Supreme Court only. This was suggested by the court in the very famous Vineet Narayan case of 1997. So they have suggested the same thing here as well. Another very interesting part is, even apart from this, most other bodies in India that are not even constitutional bodies, that are statutory bodies, they also are appointed by the President, but only on the advice of a certain committee. Look at the NHRC, the National Human Rights Commission. Look at the CVC, Central Vigilance Commission. Look at the CIC, Central Information Commission. Look at the Lokpal. All these bodies, although they may be statutory in nature, at the end of the day, they are appointed by the president on recommendation of a committee and not just on the recommendation of the government. So this change in appointment of the Election Commission of India was long pending. And many experts are extremely happy and rejoice that this kind of a change has been introduced. This plea in the Supreme Court, in fact, has been filed multiple times in the past as well. As I told you, there have been many commissions in the past that have suggested the same thing. The difference here is the Supreme Court in the past has not really heard this petition. The Supreme Court in the past has said that this is a matter which the parliament should decide. Because the parliament has the right to amend the constitution. So if the parliament wants to make certain changes in the constitution and they want to change the process of the appointment of the election commission of India, they should be the one going ahead and we will not interfere. But since the parliament has not taken any step and there are good reasons for that, no ruling party would want to give away this power. That is why the Supreme Court now has come up and taken this step. The interesting part is this plea was filed and it got expedited in the Supreme Court because of the recent appointment of Sri Arun Goyal as the election commissioner. Now, this was a very, very interesting appointment by the government of India. 
The appointment was done at such a fast speed that it took less than 24 hours for the process to start and then to finish. Now, this is where it gets interesting because usually what happens is whenever you are appointing someone to such a top position, the usual process is the government will ask the IB, that is the Intelligence Bureau, to conduct a background check or the CBI would conduct a background check. In that background check, the government will find out if there is something fishy or suspicious that has been found out about the background, about your past or something like that. If that is the case, the government of India shall not go ahead with the appointment. But when you don't even give that much time, when you are appointing someone within 24 hours of the process starting, that raises a lot of question marks. And this is what happened recently in the appointment of Sri Arun Goyal as the election commission. And this is what forced the Supreme Court also to take up this matter on an urgent basis once again. As I told you, right now, the appointment is done just on the advice of the Council of Ministers by the President of India. This process has been given in Article 324 of the Constitution of India. The interesting part is the Election Commission Act of 1991 requires that the Election Commission and the Chief Election Commissioner must hold the post for a period of six years. Now, this is also very interesting. As I told you earlier, as per the Constitution, the Constitution says the Election Commission of India shall comprise of a Chief Election Commissioner and as many Election Commissioners as decided by the President of India from time to time. So, the President can change and decide how many election commissioners there shall be. That is why, till 1989, India only had a single member in the entire body. Till 1989, India only had the chief election commissioner and there were no other election commissioners. Post that, there was a period that the President of India appointed two more election commissioners. When this appointment came in, there was a big debate about the powers of the election commissioners. Meaning that, would the powers of the chief election commissioner be more than that of election commissioners? Or would the power of the chief election commissioner be equal to election commissioners? How would that turn out? That was not clarified because it was not written in the constitution. Later on, it was clarified that the powers of both, that is the election commissioner, and the chief election commissioner would be the same. In simple terms, it is a three-member body. So if they have to take a certain decision, let's say they have to decide that we are rescheduling elections of a certain constituency, or they have to decide that we are taking certain action, disqualifying someone, then all that has to be taken through a majority rule. These three people will go ahead and vote. Whichever side the majority rules, that will be the side that will have the final call. Doesn't matter if two election commissioners are on one side and one chief election commissioner is on the other side. Even then, it is the majority only that shall rule. So, in that sense, the word chief election commissioner, the word chief here doesn't really mean that he would have precedence over the other. It is the same law, it is the same power, the same tenure should be given here. However, that also brings us to one other very interesting point. Since we have the constitution saying that the election commission of India shall have the chief election commissioner and as many election commissioners as the president decides from time to time. That means the powers and responsibility of the other election commissioners, that is the two election commissioners that have been a part of this body, for them, their powers, their functions are not clearly defined in the constitution. This is also a major point of concern. The constitution talks very much in detail about the powers, the functions, the responsibilities, even the removal process of the chief election commissioner. But when it comes to the two election commissioners, for him, most of these processes are not mentioned. That is why there is a demand that they should be given equal status as per the constitution, which is not the case right now. I'm sure all of you are aware about the removal process also of the election commissioners. Again, for the chief election commissioner, the process is the same as the Supreme Court judge. Just like the removal proceedings of the Supreme Court judge can begin in any one of the houses of the parliament, either the Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha, 
it has to be passed by a special majority and then it goes to president of india exactly the same process has to be followed by the chief election commissioner's removal however when it comes to removal of election commissioners that is not the process for election commissioners the president can remove them on the advice on the concurrence of the chief election commissioner so they do not have the safety and security of tenure as the chief election commissioner should have the reason being while the constitution has provisions about the chief election commissioner for the other election commissioners the constitution itself is not very clear that is why you have to be very very careful while attempting a question on this topic in the prelims exam also if the question is about the chief election commissioner the removal process would be different and on the other hand if the question is asking about the election commissioners then the removal process shall be different please do not be confused with that because that is also a way in which the upsc can frame questions in the prelims examination since it is a constitutional body there are constitutional provisions with respect to the election commission of india starting with what exactly is the role and responsibility of the election commission then article 325 tells about how no one shall be ineligible for inclusion or claim to be included in a special electoral role on the basis of religion race caste or sex meaning that in other words we have universal adult franchise the election to the house of people that is the lok sabha and to the legislative assemblies of the state are to be based on adult suffrage the parliament has the power to make provisions with respect to election of legislatures legislature of state the election also has to be conducted by the election commission of india while the election commission of the respective states only look into elections for panchayats and the municipalities now the interesting part is the pil that was filed in the supreme court under which this decision of the supreme court came out it was not just about the appointment process of the election commissioners it was also about the other issues as we just discussed for example as i told you while the constitution talks a lot about the chief election commissioner the removal process the powers the responsibilities on the other hand the constitution is rather quiet about the other election commissioners in simple terms they have not been given equal powers and responsibilities as per the constitution which should change there should be a common procedure for removal as we have seen while the chief election commissioners removal process is difficult for the election commissioners that is not the case secondly the rule making power of the election commission like the supreme court lok sabha and rajya sabha should also be provided one other problem that we have is the election commission of india requires a large budget so usually whatever expenses they would require let's say for buying the evms for buying electoral rolls for making other kind of arrangements for all of that the budget that they require they request for that budget to the government of india and then the government of india in usual cases will go ahead and allocate the budget however they don't have an independence over it this is what the supreme court was requested to do for example recently if you saw there was a plea filed in the supreme court why is it that election commission of india is not making it compulsory to have vv pads attached with all the evms so till recently only a few evms had vv pads attached to them that was a time when the election commission of india came under criticism many opposition parties used to protest that there's something wrong with the evms when this plea was filed in the supreme court the election commission said we do not have enough budget with us to spend money and buy vv pads for all the evms that is where this matter again came to picture why is it that the election commission of india does not have its own independent budget this has to be changed as per the plea the election commission of india deserves its own independent budget and secretariat so that its dependence on the government reduces because it has a very 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 important responsibility of ensuring independence and robustness of our democracy this is it for today's big news video this topic was extremely extremely important for both prelims and the mains examination point of view so do read about it in a lot of detail thank you so much for watching the big news if you have still not subscribed to our youtube channel please do that right away and also share such videos with your friends as well have a good day jai hind